Hello friends, welcome back to Pokemon Red, the worst final evolutions. Now when we last left off, we just acquired the newest member of our party, good old Captain Burrow here, the Onyx. And I left off deciding whether or not I was going to train Captain Burrow uh, before resuming or just leave it uh, as it is and just continue on from that. Uh, I just <laughs> decided to just keep it as it is. And I I mean, I went through leveling up Paris as I was traveling through and Tochka turned out okay. Uh, so I'm just going to train Onyx on the fly as we progress and hopefully it'll catch up to the other members levels in due time. So we are now going to make our way through the rock tunnel here. And I'm, uh, you know what, I, I think this trainer's got only grass Pokemon, but uh, I might as well just try to get as much experience as I can now. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll train up Onyx. Oh, never mind. Uh, I actually wonder, could Onyx handle this? I might be able to if it doesn't have quick attack. Yeah, I might be able to handle this. I thought this trainer was grass types only. Yeah, it goes to show how much I remember. And the miss game begins. Oh my goodness, all these criticals. Okay. Okay, looks like I'm safe. That's pretty good. I wasn't expecting uh, this easy a shot here, to be honest. Okay, it does no quick attack, but uh, even as a critical, it barely dents. Just goes to show the amazing defense that Onyx has. It's too bad everything else about it is uh, mediocre. This is going to turn into one giant miss game. <laughs> Is Tackle the new Fury Attack? Find out on today's episode. Okay, this might be a different story. I uh, would only know Double Slap saying Metronome? I'm gonna see. I mean, I'm right next to a Pokemon Center. But I'm fairly certain I, I'm not going to be able to stay in here for very long. Yeah, this is just going to get annoying fast. Uh, ducks. Hey, I wonder what uh, I wonder what Fury Attack will do. <laughs> as long as it doesn't miss. <clears throat> oh, that's that's good damage. And I got a three roll. Oh, got a four roll. Nice. Okay. Well, could have been a lot worse. I thought, uh, I thought in, I thought she was going to be a trainer that had, um, only, uh, Bellsprouts and Oddishes, like the trainer that was at the very, uh, very start of this route. Uh, good thing I battled her. Okay. At least now we know kind of where we stand, and things seem to be doing okay. Um, item-wise... Uh, I do have a lot of super potions, but I don't have any revives. So if a Pokemon in my party gets fainted, I won't have a way to restore it until I leave the cave. So I have to be very, uh, uh, foregoing, uh, not foregoing, um, I have to make sure I use my super potions at the proper time. Anyways, into the darkness! Ah, I can't see! However, I've been in this cave enough, I do know where all of the trainers are. So I won't, uh, I won't be surprised by any of the trainers that appear. Because, yeah, there's a Pokemaniac right here. Yeah. And, uh, should be a Cubone and a Slowpoke? Yep. Some things I just remember. However... Uh, this is not a good fight for Onyx, as I'm fairly certain one of Cubone's starting moves is Bone Club. Which would be super effective on Onyx, so even though I've got a lot of defense, it would do a bit of damage. 
and like I said before, I gotta be really cautious with uh, my Pokémon's health. If I was doing this as... if I was fighting as few trainers as possible, uh, I would only probably have to fight about seven or eight trainers along the way, and their Pokémon's levels are at uh, my trained four. So, it, it won't be the most difficult thing, but if I'm trying to train up Onyx, I'm going to be switching back and forth, which means they will take a few hits. And, as I'm sure most people are aware, my type coverage isn't very good. <laughs> so I have to be a little bit careful. Anyways, here's the Slowpoke. This is, could be a bad idea. I'm taking a special hit, I think. Yep. See, that that just goes to show how important special is for that situation. So I'm gonna switch in Tochika here. Now, Slowpoke is a part water, part psychic, so I can use Leech Life and deal a super effective hit. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, Leech Life restores uh, health equal to half the damage that gets inflicted. So if I healed up 11 health there, that means I did at least 22 damage, which was barely a quarter of its health bar. So you can tell Slowpoke's got a lot of health behind it. But it is not enough to uh, withstand the might of Tochiga. So good job. Of course, a lot of people get experience because they did technically start in battle. Oh, hello. Delete a move for Swords Dance. Uh, well, Sand Attack could come in handy, and I'd much rather have Swords Dance than Leer. So there we go. Now Dux has a boosting move. Now, like I, I, I think I said this in a previous episode, um, if a Pokemon gets a critical hit, um, any defensive boosts on the opponent, as well as any offensive boosts on the user, are ignored. So if I got a critical hit, it would deal as much damage as if I boosted with Sword Stance. Or at least I'm fairly certain that's how that works. Um, I forget off the top of my head if uh, a critical in this game deals 50% more damage or 100% more damage. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll figure that out in post. Um, but that's why uh, you don't tend to use uh, Sword Stance in this game as often. Uh, the critical hit of the Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon that get Sword Stance are also fast, and how critical hits are determined in this game is by the user's uh, speed stat and its uh, percentage based on that. Some Pokemon can have as much as a 1 in 5 shot of getting a critical hit. And if you... Um... Oh, actually, yeah, that is a, once again a slow poke, and I don't want to stand on that. Um, and if you get that uh, critical hit, then that just, it nullifies your sword stance. So you want to, if, you, if you're just going to be doing damage, you want to get in there and just, like, you could probably deal more damage just by attacking the three times than you could by boosting and then uh, hopefully not getting a critical hit. Now, likewise, slow Pokemon, uh, they will not be getting critical hits as often, Uh probably less than 10% or even less than 5% in some situations. So if those Pokemon could get Sword Stance, then maybe that's a good thing for them, since they're almost guaranteed to not get critical hits. And it, it, it just goes to show how the programming of the first generation's Pokemon games could have been uh, a lot better. And they did get a lot better over time. Like, they're uh, the next games in the series after this, uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver, they did do a lot of fixes to the battling system uh, in the game. Uh, many of which uh, I I'm glad they did. Um, it, it made the it made those games feel complete, shall we say? Now I I know they came out with uh, dozens more 
Pokemon games afterwards. Uh, but at the time of release, uh, those games, they felt finished. Like, they were, they were what the first game's meant to be. Um, that's probably why I have a lot of fond memories of the Generation 2 games. Now, actually, uh, my plan after I finish this is to uh, do another Worst Evolutions run-through on uh, Pokemon Crystal. And that is, uh, that is going to be a very interesting one, uh, in my opinion, obviously. A lot of the Pokemon they introduced in Generation 2, uh, a lot of them are either... Ooh, they're in Bind. Interesting. Uh, a lot of the Pokemon in those games, they're either single-stage evolution Pokemon, so their stats aren't... Um, like, super, super big. Um, or even within their own evolutions, their stat lines don't uh, skyrocket to, like, really powerful levels. Um, so their, um, so their base stats by themselves are, uh, they're not the highest in the game. Especially compared to a lot of Pokemon from the first generation, uh, so uh, can the Kanto 151, um, and even with the introduction of the special split, as they call it, uh, where Pokemon now have a special attack rating and a special defense rating, uh, which does make a lot of base stat totals higher and does fix a lot of uh, broken stat lines, like uh, Pokemon that had really high special uh, would then either have a really high special attack and mediocre special defense, or vice versa. Um, some Pokemon still didn't come out uh, on top. Um, so a lot of... Uh, a lot of Generation 2 Pokemon uh, will... Uh, ha have taken the mantle of worst evolutions in my uh, research uh, for trying to figure out uh, a worst team for that. And I, <laughs> even throughout all of this, I don't think I've decided yet on uh, what Pokemon fit the bill for the worst evolutions. So I uh, hopefully I'll have figured out a, a team pattern for uh, that game when I'm finished with this. Oh, I got lucky there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not staying in. That could hurt. Um, but hopefully, I'll have figured out um, some Pokemon for the Worst Evolutions team, and I know a few that are are almost a guarantee to be on it. But I have to figure out um, uh, what HMs I need and at what time to get through, because they do make it uh, the. The number of HMs in Generation 2 went from uh, 5, with 3 of them absolutely being required, uh, to 7, with 5 of them being required. And one of them only is needed in one particular spot, like absolutely to progress. But I still need to have a Pokémon that can learn it, so I gotta figure out how am I gonna work with that. Um, so, I, I have some ideas. Oh, self-destruct. That could hurt. Dang it! <laughs> Whoops! I mean, yay for Captain Burrow. It <laughs> got the level. But that's gonna suck, because I'm fairly certain there's another, uh, rock-type, uh, uh, trainer coming up. Oh, that's not good. I'll see what progress I can make, anyway. Yeah, I think... Oh, how many? I know there's there's two in the next area. I think there's two more I absolutely have to fight. The following area, and then one more after that. So I, I could... I could get a little lucky. Yeah, this 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 could be bad. 
Now, on the nice part, I do have uh, Tochka here who does no dig, which is super effective on the Geodudes. So hopefully things can work out from that. And I know, oh, yep, that's what I was also afraid of. Yes, Rock Throw is super effective on Tochka. So I don't know if uh, when I decide to switch in, if I'm going to be eating a Rock Throw, which will hurt. Maybe it won't uh, kill me outright, but it's certainly going to hurt. Okay. Macho. I don't think it knows a fighting move at this level, or maybe it knows low kick. I'm just gonna switch in here. I just, I need to keep getting those points. Hopefully soon, uh, Captain Burrow will learn rock throw, so it at least has a decent move. The one thing I'm dreading is, um, uh, rock throw in this game has a very, very horrible accuracy which I'm fairly certain is even lower than Fury Attack. And I've had point... Okay, well, a critical hit certainly worked. Um, there are times where I've had to... I've used Pokemon that have Rock Throw, and I, I end up probably missing more than I hit with it. So I, I'm dreading to see how many times I'm going to miss rock throw because I can almost guarantee it's going to be more than a uh, fury attack. Yeah, that that was what I was afraid of, but thankfully I've got enough bulk on me. And thankfully, I've got enough strength behind me. Well, maybe this will work. Okay, that defense curl is certainly helping. Okay, another Geodude down. One more to go, and I'm fairly certain it's a, still a Geodude. Yep, so three Geodudes and a Machop. Let's get Onyx back in here. Keep getting that experience. Oh, good thing that's not very effective. Well, for one more appearance, here comes Tochika. Okay, you can stop defense curling, just let me dig. Okay, almost. That's gonna hurt. And... Darn, that defense curl's always enough. But, Tochika prevailed. Good job. Oh! Okay, gonna need to use some items here. Oops. Wait, did I get a rare candy somewhere? Darn, that's something I should have done. Yeah, how rare candies uh, work is uh, they level up the Pokemon you use it on, but when you level up, you also get uh, increases to your stats. Uh, including your HP. And how the game calculates uh, that is it not only adds uh, points to your max HP, uh, but to also add it on at the same time, it adds it to your current HP. And because it adds to the current HP, it means your HP doesn't uh, uh, is, is no longer zero, which means your Pokemon is... Uh, able to fight. And because it's able to fight, I could use a super potion on it then. But silly me, I didn't bring any rare candies along for that situation. So I have to I have to deal with a fainted radicate. Now stop with the defense curls already, please. Oh Okay, I'll take that timing. I gotta level up, that's good. Oh, and that means I'm still underground, too. Sweet. That was a very well-timed dig. But I couldn't dodge that one. Darn it. 
Oh, but I lived. Nice job. Get to level up for its trouble. Man, Tochka, you're you're doing great. All right, well, we're making progress through the cave, which is good. Good thing I got enough super potions on me to last for a while. And Captain Burroughs is getting up there in levels too, which is really good. So down here, so trainer there. So we gotta deal with her. What she got? Oh, jiggles. Now I don't know. Am I? Could I do this? Okay, I wonder if this will work. Because I'm faster, I can, in theory, keep using Bind, and if it keeps hitting, then I can keep doing damage. And if I keep doing damage, then Jigglypuff can't act. I could, in theory, knock out the Jigglypuff without it doing a thing. I like where this is going. Okay, we're already down to half. See, this is one thing I'm really glad they fixed in later games. Uh, what it does instead of trapping the opponent... Oh, there we go, that's a miss. Um, what it does instead of tra uh, trapping the opponent like this and making them unable to, to move, uh, when you hit them with moves such as Bind or Wrap or I think the newly introduced Whirlpool, um, it does trap your opponent, so, but they can't switch. In this game, you can switch. Oh, I got disabled. Well, I lost Bind, but I can just go in with Tackle now. Um, a shot. Um, anyways, so what it does is, uh, you're unable to escape as opposed to being unable to move. And every turn, at the end of the turn, you take a percentage of your health as damage. Uh, over the span of the trapping, which is about two to five uh, uh, turns. This is why in Generation 1, uh, anything that is fast and knows wrap or bind or actually fire spin, now that I think about it too, Moltres was a prime user of that, um, they're, they're feared. Because in theory, if they don't miss, they can uh, just keep binding something to fainting. Well, there goes any trust I have in bind. Pidgey, that's not cool. Well, there we go. Nice job. Meow. Okay, I'm not trusting my accuracy, so I'm gonna let King Zing have a uh, chance to shine in the spotlight here. Use Payday. Use Payday, please. I actually wonder if any Pokemon on my team could use Payday. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check that. I know Meowth and its evolution Persian are the only Pokemon that can naturally learn Payday, but there is a Payday TM that can be acquired once you get Surf. And if something can learn it, then I might find a way to use that to my advantage. Should probably heal up now that I think about it. Well, it's not the worst. Just a scratch or two. Now there's a hiker here. Now this one, I think he has two Geodudes and a Graveler, so... I have to be very wary of self-destruct again. Maybe I can get a good timed dig. Here's hoping. Good thing I still have enough digs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, I am loving this. Now, of course, I'm stuck in here. Oh, that would have been really funny if I was fast enough or not fast enough, slow enough, that the opponent decided to, or not to, yeah, decided to use self-destruct, and I went first, or they went first, and 
self-destructed while I was still underground. Man, that would have been really funny. Oh, wow, a speed tie. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure if you notice there, for the first two turns, uh, Graveler moved first, but then Parasect moved first uh, on that turn there. Uh, in a situation where uh, both Pokemon's speed are equal, uh, it will randomly decide who goes first and then play out the turn order as as it is required. Um, so in that situation there, uh, the Graveler had the exact same speed as my Parasect did. And therefore the turn order, when it was randomly decided, uh, the Graveler uh, moved first the first two times. Yep, only a speed of 23, but it mattered. Um, so yeah, the Graveler moved twice the first two turns, and then after that, uh, Paris got the lucky flip and moved first. So, yay, I'll take that luck. But this is good, we're, we're almost out of the cave here. I'm sure, uh, Watchful eyes there noticed I was walking forward and then suddenly stopping and moving left and right. Uh, those were trainers I was walking in front of. But uh, I'm trying to get out of here as quick as I can. Uh, so I'm, I'm only doing the fights that are absolutely required. And there were a few points I could have actually picked a trainer to fight, but regardless, I would have had to fight them. Uh, so I'm only fighting the ones that I have to for now. Uh, I'll come back at a later point if I want to get more experience or money. And then um, I will uh, just use them to... I'll just fight off screen or something like that. Because one thing I can anticipate, uh, the Elite Four in this game, so the final challenge that we have to do... Uh, their Pokemon are within the the range of level 60. And those are not only fully evolved Pokemon with much better moves and much better uh, thinking, or AI as the computer would do, um, going up against a team like this, uh, unless I am of said equal level and have the right moves on them and go in with the proper strategy, I would probably keep getting my butt kicked. And considering my strategy is that I'm unable to use healing items in battle, I can't stall them out and be like, oh hey, I'll let residual damage kill them, or I'll just keep doing revive loops and uh, uh, eventually find a loop where I can inflict damage fast enough to knock out their Pokemon. No, I'm not going to be able to do any of that in battle. So I have to make sure that my Pokemon can go in there and they're either strong enough to take out the Pokemon without getting hit or resilient enough to be able to take hits. So that's going to require a lot of off-screen grinding, which I'm kind of dreading. Uh, but hey, we, we made it out of Rock Tunnel. Now, there's a few trainers uh, here, but once again, I'm just going to walk past them for now. I wonder if this obvious tree in the middle of nowhere has an item. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those hidden items that's just like, it's screaming, I am here. But anyway, we have made it to Lavender Town, the home of ghost Pokemon. And Pokemon Tower. But we won't be doing anything here right away. Uh, we'll be going to uh, Celadon City, which is to the west. And we're going to be doing uh, another gym fight there. And uh, another run-in with Team Rocket is going to occur there too. So I've uh, I made some pretty good progress here. i got five levels on Captain Burrow. It's turning out to be uh, doing okay. I know that's mostly because of Bind, but I'll, I'll take my victories where I can. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm going to call the episode here, and when we come back next time, we'll continue the adventure onwards to Celadon City, 
and hopefully things will work out from that. So anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care, stay safe, and have a good day.